Hello and welcome to CED Mo's Boss online video series. Today we're going to cover how to use a Micrologix 1400 as a Modbus master. Okay, so here we have our blank Micrologix 1400 project. Uh, we're just going to start from scratch here. Uh, the goal here is to set up the Micrologix 1400 to be our Modbus TCP master. Um, uh, for the Modbus slave device, I have uh, a Micro 820 controller. Um, there's two things you have to do on this to enable that functionality uh, under the Ethernet. Uh, we're using TCP, so you want to enable the Modbus TCP server. Um, you could also We could also do this over serial as well. Uh, both of these devices have that ability. But then under the Modbus mapping, uh, all we have to do is map some of these variable names. Uh, if you want to add one to the server, you just click it, um, and it'll automatically grab the next uh, Modbus address that you want to start at and just uh, automatically map it for you. So these are the these are already being mapped to the Modbus server uh, from this uh, Micro 820. So we're going to configure the 1400 to be the master and to um, grab the information out of the 820 over Modbus. So first thing we need to do um, is under our channel configuration. Um, so channel zero is our is our serial port. Channel one is our Ethernet port. As you can see, we already have an Ether, uh, an IP address configured in here. Um, this is a, a unit I have sitting here at my desk. Uh, but you do have to enable the Modbus TCP. So we're going to check that. Uh, you can see that brings up this extra tab, and we'll get to that in a second. If we did want to do this over Modbus serial, we could do that over the serial port as well. You just tell it if it's the master or slave. Uh, so we're going to, but in this example, we're going to use this TCP. So we enabled that. We'll hit apply. Uh, and then over here, you'd see that this, this extra tab appears. This is in the case that um, if this was a Modbus slave, we would map files, data files, to the holding registers or coils. So if we wanted N7 uh, to be uh, mapped to the holding register 4007, uh, we could put that in here. We just put data file seven, but we're not going to this since this is going to be our master and do the polling. We don't have to do that. But just so you know, you this can the Micrologix fourteen hundred can act as a uh, Modbus slave, and you could just map data files to the registers. So we'll hit apply and hit OK. Um, now what we're going to do is we're this is the next step. It's not necessary, but I like to get it out of the way is that we go ahead and we download to the controller. And the reason for that is when we enable that Modbus um, functionality on the Ethernet port, it's going to require us to do a, uh, a reboot on the controller in order for that to take hold. Um, and I like to get that out of the way so that then I could do handle the programming, uploading, downloading without having to restart at all. I can start testing. So I just, it's a preference. You can wait until you do a one massive download, but I like to get it out of the way. So let's go ahead and download this blank project into our controller. It's already out here. Yep. So when that downloads, I'm going to have to reboot my controller here. Um, so I will pause the, vi the uh, recording here and we'll come back just so you know that you, when this is done, and I believe it will give us a notification here that we do require a restart. Okay, it's not, oh, there we go. Um, but I, I happen to know, because I've run into this problem before, uh, that anytime you turn on that Modbus TCP, you do need to reboot the controller. So I'll see you on the other side of that. All right, so uh, while our controller is rebooting, it's almost done back there, um, we're gonna go ahead and do some preliminary work here offline. So the first thing I'm gonna do, we're gonna to have to put this data somewhere. So I'm gonna change, um, you know, just add some more integers. Um, I know we're gonna to try to read a float, so we're gonna, you know, add some floats here. Uh, let's close that and we'll get, uh, we'll add some timers. Just to make sure we have everything we need. Now also, so as a Modbus master, uh, it's, you know, we have to write some message commands to pull the data out of the Modbus slave, in this case, the 820. So to read that data or to write it, whichever one we're going to do, in this case, we're just going to read a couple integers and some floats. 
we need to have some message um, commands and data files ready for that. So we have to create those. So let's go ahead and create our message files. And then anybody that's ever done a message file in 500, you also have to create these routing information files. There we go, we'll have that. So there we go, we're ready to go. So let's go ahead. The first thing we're gonna do is create our first message command. MG, oop, MG9. There we go. Let's get our setup screen. So uh, here we select, the first thing we select is our channel. Uh, the channels are, you know, zero is, channel zero is our, our serial port. Um, channel one is our ethernet port. And you see we can either use regular ethernet, which would still leave us with just the normal uh, SIP reads um, that you would see in a normal uh, logics or um, if we were doing controller to controller, not on Modbus type of reads or writes. But in this case, we're gonna select the ethernet port, but we're gonna make sure we select this Modbus TCP side. And when we do that, we're gonna see this change to a Modbus command. And in this case, we're going, so these are the options we have. We're gonna read some holding registers. But you can, I would take a second and just, you know, read down through these, see what they all say, um, make sure you know what they do. But uh, in this case, we're just going to read some holding registers. And our, now on our controller side, on the Micrologic 1400 side, this is, we're going to start with address 0 and 70. We're going to, um, and we're only going to read one integer, one 16-bit integer. Keep in mind, this does allow you to select 32-bit but the Micrologic port does not like 32-bit Modbus. So don't leave this at 16-bit when dealing with Modbus. And then our Modbus address at the destination at the target device is one. As you can see over here in our slave, we want to read integer A, which is, you know, uh, Modbus 4001. So we're going to leave this at one, and that auto fills this Modbus address for us. The routing information is that uh, RI10 file that we created. So we're going to use RI10, zero. And then the uh, here's our IP address of the target device, which in this case is tw dot 20. So there we go. That's set and should be just fine. We'll verify it. We're good. No errors. Now, something I like to do is I like to run my messages uh, off of timers um, or if you are using serial, you should write a sequencer since you don't have two serial commands um, trying to execute at the same time. But in Ethernet, we can have multiple run at the same time. It's not as big of a deal. But I like to throw a timer in here. Just to kind of, you know, um, allow uh, some sort of control of how often this um, message command will try to go out and read the information. There we go, and we'll save that. Um, so our next step here is to download this to the controller. So we'll pop, let's go ahead and do that. There we go, we're running, we're online with our controller. You can see the timer just sitting here running. So what it is doing, it's happening a little too quick for you to see visually, but this is, uh, we're going out and reading that register every half second. And you see we're getting a done bit here, no errors. So we're good to go. Um, so if we open up our N7 register here, we have a zero. So let's go over to our Modbus slave device and let's connect to it. Jake, just a second to connect to this controller. Okay, here we are connected. We're going to open up our 
over here to our values and we have a zero in here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a value of 25 in here and we should see that value update over here. So there we go. We know we're reading that register. And if we go over here again, let's see if I can get a split screen for you. Mm -hmm. If we change the value here to 50, we should see it over on the right side change to 50. Correct. Okay, so you saw this value update. So there we go. We know we're reading that value correctly. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to I'm going to pause the recording. And I'm going to add some code in here to also read a float um, and multiple registers. Just and then we'll review that and we'll see you in just a second. Okay, uh, as you can see, I've added uh, a bit of programming here, and so I'm just going to go over what I've changed and what we have going on. Uh, first of all, our timer up here. Um, is now just um, incrementing every two seconds our a sequencer that I have built here just to show you how you can control how you do one message at a time. So every two seconds, we're uh, executing one of these rungs um, based on where our sequencer N110 is, what the value is. And then when it's finished, when the timer is finished and the message has either aired out or finished, we move on to the next rung and do the exact same thing. Um, obviously, with Ethernet, we could speed this up a lot faster than two seconds or not even need this timer. We could just have the sequencer running indefinitely, and, and it would run as fast as it possibly can. Um, but I slowed it down to two seconds just so you could see, uh, for the video purposes here, um, you know how this is incrementing through these three messages. So what are the three messages? The first one, this is the same message that we had uh, in the first part of the video here. Um, only I changed our size of elements to two, um, and we're starting at N70. So I'll show you there. We should be reading now N70 and N71, uh, starting at address Modbus address one. So we'll show you what's going on with that. Uh, the next one we have, we're reading a float. So in order to read a float over Modbus, you actually have to read two 16-bit registers. Um, starting, so we're doing four zero 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 three, and uh, three and four. And then we're putting those in N72 and 3. And we're taking N72 and 3 in this copy word, and we're moving it into F80. That's how you have to read a float um, out of a, tar a slave device into 500. Uh, and then this last one, we're writing a register. So it's the exact same situation as the top, only instead we're using this right single register. Um, and we're writing one register from N74 into the five address over at the slave. Now, if you wanted to do multiple registers in a write, you would have to select the right multiple registers. And then it would allow you to change this size and elements. Um, so just to show you that this is all working correctly, let's bring up our data tables here and our float like that. And we'll go side by side with our slave devices. This is our Micro 820. Um, so uh, looking at our Modbus table here, uh, integer B is at address 2. Um, so that that first uh, message instruction, we're reading two um, registers into N70 and N71. So that's where we're going to read uh, 4001 into 0, N70, and 4002 into N71. Uh, this next one is our float, uh, so that starts at our three, and then we have this last register here, which I did make a dent just to show you can use uh, a double integer. It just takes up two holding registers. Uh, if we wanted to do that, uh, write a long word from 500 into that, we could. All right, so let's go back over to our values, and we have 50 here. If we change our value here of, of integer B, we should see our value over here in N71 change to whatever value we have in here. So let's change that to what, 25? And now it's reading, you know, every two seconds. So this could take up to six seconds, but it already updated. Just remember our sequence server here is running every two seconds. Uh, it's doing a message, so it could take uh, a few seconds for this to update over here. Um, and so next is our float. So here's our float values at zero. So we'd be looking down here. We are going to see, you may see values here in two and three in the integers. Uh, but then we're using that copy word instruction to combine them into the float. So we should get the actual real value of the float here. So if we put a value 
in here. I hit enter. We see if we should see something over here in a second once these um, go through. Yeah. So yeah, you see the actual value here, the float to a float, and you see a value up here in in uh, n73 and n72, and those are being combined uh, on the bit level uh, down to or to our float. So that's working properly, and we could you know put a much you know higher or even lower value in there, and we should see it update over here as well. Yep, there we go. And see there are two registers being combined into the float negative 545. So then this last one, uh, integer C, that's the one we're writing from the MicroLogix to the Micro 820, and that's our N74. So if we change this value here, we should see this value over here change. There we go, there's our 105. So we know our, our message commands are working, um, and again, this 820, the Micro 820 is simply um, acting as our slave device. It could be any Modbus device that you have in your system or in your project, and he's just shown you how the Micro 8, uh, 1400, MicroLogic 1400 can act as the Modbus master. Thank you for watching. Once again, thank you for watching, and don't forget to check out future and current videos by subscribing to CED Mosbaugh Electric Supply on YouTube or visiting www.mosbaugh.com media. Thanks again.